Hi guys, so today we are continuing on with my lipstick declutter. This is part five of six. If you've missed my other declutters in this category, I will link those down below. In fact, I will link my entire declutter playlist down below. But essentially what we're doing is going color family by color family and looking at everything in my collection and trying to make some determinations on what is a duplicate, what is products that I'm just not loving anymore, what's expired that I can get rid of. Today, we're going to be tackling all of my reds and oranges. I love red and orange lipstick on me. It is one of my kind of go-to shades when I want to just feel a little extra polished and put together. I feel like a red lip is just always classic and always fun and I actually am a big fan of orangey lips on me as well. So it is a category I love, but it is also a category where I feel like if I have curated my favorites in that category, I'm probably going to be reaching for them more often than not because although I love a red lip or an orange lip, it's not what I'm wearing every single day. I tend to wear nudes and mauves more. As with past declutters, we're going to get rid of products that have expired or gone off. We are going to look at products that are duplicates or I'm just not wearing anymore and friends and family will be given some of them and then anything that can be sanitized will be and will be sent to Project Beauty Share great charity organization. I will leave all of their information down below and then the balance will go into my collection as things that I am keeping. All right, let's sort, sort this out. As with my past declutters, I'm going to look at all of the cream products first and then we will come back and look at liquid lipsticks in that color family. Let's get started. All right, so here are all of my red lipsticks. There are various tones of reds in here, some that are more pinky red, some that are more um, classic red versus deeper reds. So I definitely wanna keep a couple different tones of red, but I think the easiest thing to do is just gonna be to swatch these down my arm like we have before. <laughs> you know, I've just barely gotten the stains off my arm from all of the pink swatches, and I feel like uh, when we go through and swatch all of these, my arm is going to be completely stained again. And then we've got berries and vampy tones to film after this, and that's just gonna get even worse. All right, let's get swatch in here. So this is from Julep. This is one of their hydrating lip shears in the shade Crimson. This is a really pretty formula. I do really like this formula, and I feel like this is one of the only sheer red lipsticks that I have. Um, but I feel like it's a sheer red that isn't going to like smudge or smear all over the place. I actually think that's a really pretty kind of color. So I'm probably going to keep that one for that fact alone, but let's keep going. This is Urban Decay 714. This was released as part of the Gwen Stefani collection, but it is now part of their permanent collection. And this is just a very classic red. This is part of their, I think just matte line. There you go, that's better. That was looking a little dark on camera there. So just a nice classic red, a little bit more blue based. Next up is Red Carpet Red from Charlotte Tilbury. That is a very similar shade. This is Marc Jacobs. This is the shade Goddess. This is one of his creamy lipsticks. This is part of the Besame Snow White collection. Beautiful bulleted packaging. This is Snow White Red. This is based on the color she was actually, they actually used in the movie to make her red lips. And we're off to a glorious start because I feel like all of these are pretty much the same. So next up, Rimmel 107, part of the Rimmel Kate line. This one looks in theory like it might be deeper and it is. All right, so that is deeper and it is a little more plum based than sort of that blue based, so even more blue based, a little bit deeper. Next up is MAC. This is Russian red. I thought I had Ruby Woo and I can't find it, so I feel like I might have lost it, but this is Russian red. This is really pretty packaging. This is from the brand Hmm, what is this? This is from the brand Tease Cosmetics. The packaging is really cool. This is in the shade Romantic Red. And this one is a hair more pink toned than these down here. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that on camera. These are more true blue based reds and this one's just a little bit more raspberry leaning. These next ones I think are all gonna be a little more raspberry leaning. I put them all together deliberately, this, deliberately rather. This is the shade What If, part of the ColourPop Luxe Lipsticks. And you can see this one leans even more raspberry red. You could almost argue that this is more of a hot pink color, but I feel like it is um, red on my lips. I don't think hot pink when I wear this. I think red, this is why I put it in this category. This is from the Lorac Beauty and the Beast collection. This is the shade Rose Red. And that one is a lot 
brighter. Hopefully you guys can see that. It has reddish undertones here, but it is a lot more almost neon-y looking. So that's kind of cool. This is one of my favorite red lipsticks. This is NYX Simply Red. It's the color, the formula is nice too, but this is the color Candy Apple. And this is more of that raspberry red that I just think is so pretty, but I love, love, love this formula. Incredibly blue-based. This is from the band Laga. This is their Cloud Lips. This is in the color Sun Shower. I feel like I got this in a Ipsy or something to that extent. Very similar sorts of rosy red undertones. This is one that I know I'm just gonna declutter. They don't make these anymore. This is their Soft Matte Lipstick from NYX. I used to really enjoy this formula. Um, it is very drying, but it really lasts on the lips. This probably could have been more of a plummy type color. Um, really pretty, but I also feel like these are older and are drying out. So I do know I'm gonna go ahead and declutter this. This is another one of those Tarte Rainforest of the Sea lipsticks. This is in the shade Daiquiri. This one is gonna be a little bit more of a corally red, I think. Yeah, it's more of a warm corally red, a little more muted than some of these other shades down here. Hopefully you guys can see that. This is a Korean beauty brand. I think this is the brand Etude House. This is the color. Gosh, guys, I can't tell. This one is more of a brick red. Definitely more orangey undertone. Okay, so this is ColourPop Lippy Stick. This is the shade Frenchie. This is one of their matte formulas. This is newer to my collection. And that is such a bright, vibrant neon red. Gosh, I don't think it's even, I don't think you're seeing on camera just how neon that is. I feel like neons ever pick up well on camera. I've watched other people try and film them and they never are able to get it quite right. In real life, this is so shockingly bright. Really cool and not like anything else on my arm right now. This is an Echo Soul Kiss Button lip from the brand The Same. It's a Korean beauty brand. Uh, the color is 02. I'm sure it has a name, but it is in Korean and I can't quite tell. I wanna say this was more of a bright orangey red. Oh yeah, now that is actually very similar to this one that I just swatched from ColourPop. It's just a lot more creamy. This is a NYX Full Throttle lipstick. This is in the shade 04 Firestorm. I love this formula. It's a great matte, super intense formula. That's just a classic red there. This is a Maybelline Color Drama, what do they call these? Intense Velvet Lip Pencils. I think these were trying to dupe the NARS ones when they came out. These aren't available in the United States. I actually had to order mine off of, I think a Canadian site to get it, because I was curious about them. I had heard some Canadian bloggers talk about it. The formula on these is really nice and really creamy, easy to apply. I mean, it is a great formula. I do wish we had these in the US. Unfortunately, we do not, but it's definitely starting to look like a lot of the other shades I have. This is from NARS. This is a little sample of the shade Cruella. And that one is more of a deep muted red. That's pretty. And then last in this front row here is from Bite. This is one of their high pigment pencils in the shade Pomegranate. And that is a much deeper red than a lot of the ones we have looked at as well. I have some little baby Besame lipsticks back here. I do really think the brand is pretty clever with how they go and get their lipstick colors. She goes into vintage shops. She buys lipsticks that are, you know, you know, from the 1930s, the 1940s. If she can find any sort of lipstick that has a color in it still, she buys it, she takes it back to her lab and she color matches the color back to the time frame. So these are actually replicas of colors that existed in the 30s and the 40s, which I kind of think is cool. So let's swatch all of these down the side of my arm and let's go in chronological order because that could be fun. So this is 1930 and this is going to be a very vampy color. Oh no, it just broke. 1934 broke on me and it probably should have been in the vampy section. So I can't push these up as much as I just did. I got it. Well, all right, moving on. Uh, 1935, we're just gonna put this up a smidge. So a very deep red, but really pretty. This is 1946. This is more of what I think of when I think of a classic vintage red color. This is 1969. Oh, and this probably should have been in my mauve section. Yeah, it's kind of a muted mauve color, which makes sense for the 60s. And then this one is 1970. I think I looked at the bottom of this packaging and just saw the red and assumed they were all red. And that is obviously not the case because 1970 is more of a dark mid-tone nude. I think I'm gonna pass on these two. I, they should have been counted in my muted color, so my fault. All right, let's do this. 
let's just go one by one so I can keep these straight on my arm. First up, this little julep one that's very sheer. I do think I want to keep this. I don't think I have anything else quite like this in my collection. And I like a sheer wash of color that's like that red berry tone. So I do think I'm going to keep this. These next four all seem really really similar. I do feel like this Urban Decoy Gwen Stefani is getting a little more dried out on me, so I do think I'm going to pass that on. For as much as I like Marc Jacobs' Goddess, I just can't keep justify keeping that and the Charlotte Tilbury. Um, for silly reasons, I'm going to pass on the Marc Jacobs. I like them both equally, and I feel like the formulas are very similar, but the Marc Jacobs doesn't fit very well in any of my organizers because it's so big and chubby whereas these look really nice and pretty sitting on top of my vanity. So there's my logic for keep, keeping versus getting rid of something that is super similar. So passing on this one, can I keep this one? Snow White here is very, very similar to the rest of these, um, but I, I'm, I'm going to do something that I don't often do, and that is going to be keeping it for the packaging and just for, you know, the sentiment behind it. I completely love that Snow White, who is the very first, you know, cartoon Disney princess out there. They captured, Bessemer captured her original lip shade in a lipstick. I actually think that's really cool. I do want to keep this. The next one here, 107, I actually think is a really pretty berry toned red, and I think it's actually unique on my entire arm here. So I do think I want to keep 107 from um, Rimmel. Russian red, however, is pretty much the same as these first four down here from MAC, so I'm going to pass that on. Same with this one from Thrive Cosmetics. I feel like it's very, very similar to the rest of them. The packaging is really cool. I do like this. It's a really creamy lipstick, but I feel like I have this color now in my collection a couple times over still, so passing that on. All right, so now we come to some of the more raspberry reds down here. This ColourPop lipstick and this one from NYX are really, really similar. The ColourPop one is maybe a hair more matte than the NYX one, which is a little more glossy, but I do think I wanna give this ColourPop formula a bitter shake, and I've decluttered several of them already. And this one, if you can tell, is coming out of the bullet. If I shake it, it's loose in there already. So if for some reason this one does not work out for me, I will declutter this one and just go purchase a new one of these NYX ones because I do think this is probably one of my favorite red colors. But I feel like this one is broken and this one is going strong and it'll give me a chance to play around with the ColourPop formula some more. This one from Beauty and the Beast is in the middle here and it's really, it's a very bright neon-y red but isn't as orange and vibrant as some of these ones that are down here on my arm. I don't want to wash these out, but I also feel like you're not quite getting just how vibrant these are. Sorry for the color's been too dark this whole time. So this shade here is more of a neon red that's blue based, and this is more of a neon red that's orange based. So I am gonna keep this Lorac one. I'm gonna pass on this one here. It's just a little more sheer, and I feel like I have that color now. And plus, I didn't really care for red lipsticks that have these giant um, kind of applicators. I feel like I want something more precise. This tart one in Daiquiri I think is pretty unique. It's more of a coral color, so I'm going to keep it. I just don't think this is a red that's very flattering on me. That's kind of that rusty tone. So if I'm going to go rusty red, I'm going to actually probably go even more extreme than this. I'm going to pass this guy on. So now we come to these two down here. So ColourPop in Frenchie is the first one, and this Eco Souls is the second. I think I'm going to keep ColourPop and pass on Eco Soul. Next up is that Maybelline Color Drama shade here. It is really pretty, but I think it's replicated many times over. I do want to keep this full throttle one. I feel like it's just a little brighter of a red than some of these ones down here, so I'm going to keep that. I feel like I'm going to pass on this high pigment pencil. It's just a little glossy from Bite to make me like completely secure in wearing it. And then as far as this NARS ones go, I think it's nice and vampy and deeper, so I'm gonna go ahead and keep it. And then we come to these two down here from Besame, and we have 1946 and 1935. 35 is the darker one there. I think I'm gonna keep both of these and actually make a point to play around and try with them a bit more. Don't really love this little sample size, but I'd like to see if I like these two enough to maybe you know, declutter these samples and get a full-size formula of them, because I do feel like this, especially this first shade, 1935, is kind of cool and a little more vampy red, so I do think I'm gonna keep these two. So my apologies for the audio in that last little bit there. I realized that my microphone had turned off, so it was just capturing ambient noise through my actual camera, so 
We are back to normal sound recording and we are looking at red liquefied lipsticks and true matte liquid lipsticks. So I do like a matte liquid lipstick. When we start talking about things that are, I start to prefer a liquid lipstick formula, brighter and deeper colors like this definitely appeal to me but let's talk about a few of the more liquefied lipsticks first. This is the NARS Velvet Lip Glide in the shade Impossible Red. It's one of those reds that when I put it on, it looks almost neon. Um, really comfortable formula. I really love this color. I think it may be getting discontinued because I think I saw it on Hope Look not that long ago. So, but I really, really enjoyed it. I think this was part of a collection that was exclusive to Nordstrom, but I did really enjoy this one and I don't think I'm gonna get rid of it. Um, these two are liquefied lipsticks as well. This is the Color Jolt in number 20. All right, so this one is actually more orange. Um, in fact, it's called Orange Asper, so I'm gonna hold on this until we get to the orange lipsticks. So that just leaves this. This is the Infallible Pro Gloss in the shade 308 Shanghai Scarlet. Just a classic cream liquefied lipstick. These two are gonna be, I think, a little bit more like this Impossible Red here, so it has almost like a neon coral aspect to it. This is Lime Crime True Love. I don't actively purchase from Lime Crime, but my sister who doesn't really follow much in makeup world at all, um, and I've never really talked to her about it, does really like the Lime Crime colors and the Lime Crime uh, products that she had, and she gave this to me as a thank you gift for helping out during st doing stuff during her wedding. It is a really cool neon coral color. I'm curious to see if it's gonna be similar to this, which is the Healthy Lip from, this is Tulip Treatment from Physicians Formula, the Healthy Lip. This is a really lovely formula, really comfortable on the lip. Mm, nope, that one's a little bit more muted. All right, let's keep going. This is from Fiona Styles. I feel like these are all going off, although this one doesn't look like it's going off as much as the one that I saw the other day. This is Cherry Street. This was a liquefied lipstick that never really set down matte, but was so pigmented it never moved either. Yeah, that still seems like it's going strong. Doesn't smell bad. All right, maybe I can get another year or two out of that. All right, let's keep swatching. This is where we get into true matte liquid lipsticks. So this is Sephora Cream Lip Stain in 01. One of their classic colors, just a beautiful, beautiful classic red. Not too, not too pinky, not too orangey gorgeous color. This is an O for a long lasting liquid in Atlantic City. That one is a little bit deeper of a red. Hopefully you guys can see the distinction on camera. I feel like I can get my colors pretty true to life and I feel like I'm struggling a little bit with this. All right, so that is Ofra. This is Jouer. This is the shade Fraise Bonbon. I'm probably mispronouncing the word Fraise. Some of these Jouer ones have started to go this one still seems like it is an okay color. It's always misleading to me because it looks very dark and red in the container. And then when you put it on your arm, it's actually one of those very raspberry reds that I like a lot. And I think I forget that because it looks so different. This one still looks like it's okay, uh, hasn't gone off. This is a little sample of the NARS Power Matte Lip Pigment in Star Woman. Um, not my favorite liquid lipstick formula. It is very, very liquidy. Um, that is a really pretty color though. It's really a deep red. And then these two Maybelline uh, Superstay Matte Inks. This is the shade Pioneer. This is part of their original collection. This is kind of their classic red. A little bit deeper, but definitely a little bit more of that berry tone like we see in the Jouer one. And then this is the Superstay in Ruler. This one is part of their newer collection. And this is almost a muted red. In fact, I debated which section to put this in because it's like, it could be mauve -ish, it could be red. It's got bluish mauve undertones. It could be a berry. I don't know. I may have put this in the wrong category. This may should have been in berries now that I'm seeing it, but it's already here, let's deal with it. Let's figure out what we wanna keep. So that is what we have here. Uh, let's make a couple of quick decisions here. Let's go to the line. NARS Velvet Lip Glide, the first one, yes. The Infallible Pro Gloss and the Fiona Styles one, I think are pretty darn similar to each other from a color and a formula perspective. I'm gonna keep Fiona Styles, I'm gonna pass on the L'Oreal. This Lime Crime one, I'm just not reaching for, and I think it's because this undertone is so neon coral and just almost pinkish. I don't know as if it's my favorite color, and I think if I'm gonna reach for a color like this, I'm gonna prefer the Healthy Lip, which is very similar 
kind of corally undertone, but just is a little more wearable. So I'm gonna pass on Lime Crime and keep the healthy lip. All right, now we come to all of the true matte ones here. All right, so this is the Sephora one here, and then the next one up is the Ofra. I feel like these are very different from one another, so I do wanna keep those. Now that I'm staring at how kind of neon-y, raspberry this Jouer one is, I think I can pass on it. I like this deep red color, but to be honest, I don't love this formula, even though it is unique. This color is unique to my collection. I don't love this formula enough to want to keep it. And then these two down at the end here, I do really like, so I'm gonna hang on to them. Okay, so now we come to sort of my oranges and orangey red colors. I don't have as many of these, so I just put all of them in one pile here so we could look through them. Um, up first is a limited edition collection. This is from Maybelline and Gigi Hadid. This is the shade Austin. And I have this in my collection, but I haven't worn it much, to be honest. Um, it is a really pretty sort of tomato red orange, so I think that's kind of cool. Up next is the shade Matte About Matte at Bat. This is from L'Oreal. This is part of their matte collection. And I love the formula of these L'Oreal lipsticks, but man, I hate the smell. Like, I almost can't even... Ugh, I hate the smell. God, it's so bad. So weird and perfumey. This is definitely a more neon-y, pure orange color than this red. You can tell the difference for sure. So then let's grab this one. This is Charlotte Tilbury in Tell Laura. This is one of my favorite orangey reds. I feel like it's going to be very similar to the Gigi Hadid one. It is. Um, okay, and then this is a metalized lipstick from Urban Decay. This is Wildfire. This is kind of an interesting orangey red copper color. Definitely unique in my collection. I don't wear it a ton, but I always get a lot of compliments when I do wear it. Um, people always ask me what's on my lips. So, cool color. And then this is a bite matte lip crane in clementine also probably one of my favorite orangey red colors this one is a little more orangey and less red than these so um, i definitely feel like the tell laura and that Gigi Hadid, hadid shade are more safe and this one definitely has a lot um, more tomatoey orange in it really pretty color though love the formula have worn the heck out of this shade uh, let's make some quick decisions on these before we get into liquid lip fide lipsticks. So I think I can easily pass on Gigi Hadid. I feel like it's exact same as Tell Laura. That can go. I would keep this Clementine shade from L'Oreal if I could just get past the scent. I just can't keep their lipsticks. They just drive me crazy. I can't do it. Um, I do think I'm going to keep Tell Laura. I'm not quite ready to part with Wildfire, and then I'm definitely not getting rid of Bite Clementine. All right, so moving on, this is a really interesting shade, and I didn't even know what category to put it in. This is the shade Faded Clementine from M Cosmetics. I ended up putting it here in the oranges because it just, I don't know, it wasn't, it didn't easily fit into any other color category that I had going, and I thought, you know what? It's like a muted pumpkin spice orange uh, it's a cool color i don't have anything like it in my collection i will say it's definitely a color that's not an easy wearing color it's definitely one where it's like i want this to be the statement lip and i need to work an eye look around it but it's such a cool color and i so love this for fall that i am not giving it up plus her cloud paint formula is just amazing these let's swatch this is the color jolt in orange from maybelline Definitely a bright, vivid neon orange there. Curious to see how these next two compare to it though. So these are both ultra satins from ColourPop. This is in the shade Cozy. And then this is part of the Kathleen Lights collection. This is the shade Revere. Sometimes I feel like the ColourPop stoppers are not as good as others. So it's definitely more of a bright orange. Yeah, there's some differences between those two. This has more orange in it and this has more red in it. I don't understand why some of these are messier than others though. Like this shade in Cozy is so much easier and cleaner in the cap. And this one just makes such a freaking mess coming out the top. Like it takes off so much product. It's like the stopper's broken. Um, and then this is Maybelline uh, Super Stay Matte Ink in the shade 25 Heroin. That is a really neon orangey color. Okay, so now that I look at these, 
I actually think these two shades are incredibly similar. I'm going to keep the Maybelline Superstay and get rid of the Color Jolt. I am going to keep this first shade cozy, and I think I'm going to pass on the Revere. Revere shade from Kathleen Lights. I just feel like the packaging is like driving me crazy. It takes so much product out. It's just messy. So I think the stopper's broken in it and I just, I don't know, I don't wanna mess with it. I have other colors that I like as much. So keeping cozy, getting rid of Revere. Okay, quick change out. I did end up tossing these other two Besame ones in my donate pile. I just feel like I know myself well enough to know that I'm not gonna reach for these. And to be totally honest, even if I loved one of these shades, the way that they cut their lipstick bullets with this kind of triangle shape at the top here um, is not my favorite for applying. So I don't know as if I would go out of my way to purchase one of these shades. Even if I loved it, I would probably find something locally and that I could pick up at Sephora or Ulta that was similar. So all the reasons I discussed, I'm still keeping Snow White, but I did move these two over here. So this is my donate bin and this is my keep bin. I did well in this round. I'm keeping 25, I'm getting rid of 24. So that is 49% of my collection. I feel like I have kept different tones of reds and oranges and different finishes of reds and oranges. And I've gotten rid of shades that are highly duplicative, even if they are products that I absolutely love, like this Marc Jacobs Goddess. You know, this still makes me sad to put it in here, but I feel like I've done the right thing as far as making sure I have a finish and a format in each color way of red that I like. So that wraps us up for today. I, if you guys are enjoying this series, make sure and give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Check out any of the declutters that you have missed down below. There are definitely starting to be a lot of them, but there are a lot more where this is coming. We have one more lip declutter to do, and that is berries and more vampy shades. So look for that for me soon. But until then, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Talk to you soon.